Bird Note presents. From Bird Note, this is Bring Birds Back. I'm Tanaja Hamilton. One of the biggest ways to help bring birds back is by bringing more people into the bird world. As a relatively new birder myself, I can say that noticing and caring about the birds around you, it makes you want to help. In this episode, we're looking at a movement that really embodies this idea. This week marks the return of a multi-day event celebrating an often overlooked contingent of the birding community. Black people. (laughs) That's right. The second annual Black Birders Week is happening right now, with people across the country set to participate in walks, talks, and community building, along with an incredible group of organizers like Karina Newsom, Tyke James, and today's guest, Sheridan Alford. Now, if you're like me around a year ago, you might be thinking, wow, I didn't even know that Black people birded. I didn't know this was a thing. And obviously, you are not alone in that thought. Going back to the statistic that I cited in the last episode from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, in 2011, 93% of birders were white. But the organizers of Black Birders Week are trying real hard to change that narrative. And they want to reclaim going out into nature and learning from it as a restorative practice rooted in our collective lineages, languages, and legacies. Mostly, though, they want you to know that we out here. Sheridan, thank you so much for being here. It is so wonderful to have you on today's show. Thank you guys for having me. I'm happy to be here. So you and I both are in Georgia. Yes, yes. And I went to school in Carrollton. And you went to school in Athens, home of the dogs. Yes, the dogs. (laughs) I would bark, but that's a lot. That's a bit much. (laughs) So rumor has it that your favorite bird shares your school colors. Tell us a little bit about that. It does. It does. You know, this is just, this is really just an origin story. (laughs) Your superhero origin story. Right. The Northern Cardinal was actually my elementary school mascot. It was probably the first bird I ever knew, like, by sight, that's a cardinal. And it was really just foreshadowing for the fact that I would eventually go to UGA, uh, University of Georgia. The colors match the bird, the reds, and then the black. Now, the birds have a little orange, but, you know. (laughs) Those are Clemson colors? We don't. (laughs) Clemson, Florida, all the enemies. But, yes, that red and black um, definitely was foreshadowing the school that I go to. Obviously, what I love to do. Turning it into not only a hobby, but it's turned into a movement. and It's turned into so much more. We love to see it. I know something that you are pretty passionate about is the mental health aspect of Mm, being outside, especially for Black folks. Can you talk a little bit about that and what's the relationship between, you know, a sound state of mind and being out in nature to enjoy the birds? Yeah, like birding is my way of getting outdoors. But outside, there are no bounds. You can step out the door. You don't even have to walk two feet this way or that way. Step outside, take a deep breath, close your eyes and like really have a moment to yourself is very important to me. And... There's always a narrative of Black people being angry or just being a certain type of way. Yeah. Especially Black men who deal with a lot of, like, internal emotions just because they can't express them. If I express my emotion, I'm going to be looked at negatively. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people tend to keep that in. And I'm always like, you can't keep it in. You can't ball up. Like, you have to find a constructive way to manage those emotions. Right. As a community, we deal with a lot of trauma Mm. trauma that you didn't even ask for but it's there regardless and you have your own life to live your own battles and stories that are a little different from everyone else's and so I think knowing that there's a place that you can go my recommendation is always outside Mm. I do these like journal sits it's where Mm -hmm. you just go outside and you have a journal and you just sit there in one spot for like 30 minutes You can write, you can draw, you can name all the ants. Like, you Mm. just do whatever. But it's just 30 minutes. That's also a a grounding technique, too. Right. When you're overwhelmed or some folks, when they have a panic attack, 
they are told to, you know, ground themselves by being able to name things that they can see, that they can touch and they can feel. And I love the idea of being out in nature and letting that be the thing that grounds you. Right. Exactly. I think nature is a good supplement. If you need something to distract you, it has that. If you need something to have peace and be still, it has that. And I think it provides that level of accessibility that oftentimes is either expensive Mm. or like you just can't get your hands on it. So I'm a big proponent of taking advantage of the world around you. Yeah. And like I said, I use birding personally. I think birds are cool. I like finding them, watching them, looking at them, listening to them. Yeah, I love that this is not just something fun to do or pretty to look at, but it's good for us in a bunch of different ways than I think what is the easiest thing to pick up where it's like, you go outside and that's physical health, but there's so many different aspects to it, right? Yeah, and there are a million ways that I can pitch to someone that birding is cool. (laughs) I can come (laughs) at you from a physical side. I can come at you from a mental stability um, a science standpoint, and that just shows the the range, okay? Birding has the range. Mm-hmm. It's definitely the Beyonce of the natural sciences, you know? <laughs> I love that. And you, you actually brought up a question that I have. So if you're talking to somebody who has never really, really took the time to, like, look at birds or engage with birds in the bird world— what is your pitch? Like, what mm-hmm. do you say to make it sound as cool as you think it is? Like, <laughs> because I, I find I struggle with that. They're... <laughs> like, they're cool, I promise. <laughs> right? cool. I feel like I always start out like, first of all, if a bird lands on your windowsill, you're going to sit there. You're going to watch it for a high little second, whether you care or not. Right? Right, right. Think of the birds outside your window, outside your workplace, whatever. If you just notice how they're like, they're always there. The resilience is usually something that I kind of lead with. And then we get into, okay, well, I want you to go online and start Googling and find your favorite bird. Like, what bird is you? Because, again, there's, um, like, thousands of species. Everybody can find a bird that really speaks to their inner personality or their style or their vibe. (laughs) So I was trying to find, like, let me me work with you. We're going to find your bird. And then they're everywhere. So at any given point in the day or time or location, you can find a bird somewhere. Mm. So I think everyone has a little bit of fascination for birds. It's just a matter of let's dive into that. You know, it's really cool about what you just said. It is so accessible, right? Right. Just looking out at the world around you and that very act doesn't have a lot of barriers. With that being said, the field of ornithology and Mm -hmm. the practice and the hobby of bird watching can be a little exclusive. Right, yeah. And inaccessible. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, a little bit of backstory, like ornithology and the study of it, even from across the pond or whatever, it was always traditionally a rich white person sport. Like you had the money to get these expensive binoculars, but you also had the time to just sit around, Mm. quote-unquote sit around, and look at birds for your leisure, something that only a certain level of person was able to do. And then, of course, diving into the diversity aspect of it, being Black, like, at a time we were forced to be outside, so we had to be outside. But I always say, like, Black people are the originators of outside. Like, we we (laughs) created outside. (laughs) We are outside, you know? And outside is us. I feel it. I feel it. It's just a matter of tapping back in. And what better way to do this than to go out on a bird walk of our own? I'm excited for it to be spring again. Me too. We met up in the evening at a nearby park. And we're chatting and intermittently Sheridan would get real quiet. And that would be my cue to stop running my mouth so that we can listen to the bird song. Dear listener, Sheridan is focusing. She's trying real hard to figure out who that is that we hear. We got like three different ones going on. It's social hour. It is social hour. See, it's starting to get dark. And that like metallic sounding bird behind this, which is really metallic cool. sounding. It sounds like a robot, kind of. It's a wood thrush. And they're a migratory bird, so they're not always here. Like they're not here during the winter. Mm. So when you're walking and you hear one, like, 
I don't know. I just think they have a cool sound. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, like, you know it's migration season now. The wood thrushes <laughs> are right here. Huh. Okay. A few months ago, I moved back to Georgia, and it has been so cool to learn more about the place I live and the little creatures around me. That's the state bird of Georgia. <laughs> it, which one? The brown thrasher. The brown thrasher? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And- so as a newbie, I have mm-hmm. trouble seeing them with my eyes and then finding them in the binoculars. Mm-hmm. So what the, the greats have taught me was look with your eyes and then just bring your binoculars up to you. Like, don't bring the binoculars up first and then search because you're not going to find it. Found them. So, yeah. So, oh, that's cool. As a new birder, having this kind of joyful mentorship moment was really special. Learning the ropes from someone who was in my shoes only a few short years ago made me feel anchored within the broader community. Turns out, early mentorship from another Black woman really helped Sheridan to spread her wings in her own right. My boss at the time was like, hey, do you want to go on this bird walk? You know, I know some other Black people that do birding and this will be cool. And I was like, sure, why not? Yeah, let's go. Um, Little did you know how rare. Right, right, right. At the time, I was just like, yeah, sure, sounds fun. So it was cool. It was cool. It was a good experience. And then I realized that, like, there are no black people that actually bird except for those ones that I met. (laughs) And it's funny because shortly following my inaugural bird walk, (laughs) the start of it all, I went to my local chapter's walk, like, a couple months later. Very typical, like, older people. I think I was the only black person And I think that's what really prompted me to continue. Like, I need more black people, I need more young people to go on bird walks and create the environment that I was introduced to. And Black Birders Week is a direct extension of that. After the break, we'll talk about how the first event started, where it's going, and birding playlists. You're gonna wanna stick around. That's after this. Are you looking to begin bird watching? Find new ways to appreciate nature? Just looking to push your birding skills to the next level? You can find courses on all of these subjects and more at the Cornell Lab of Ornithology's Bird Academy. Bird Academy's self-paced online courses continue a century-old Cornell lab tradition of sharing the wonder and joy of birds with people from all walks of life. Whether you're just starting to discover the joys of bird watching, a budding ornithologist, an expert looking to fill out your life list, or you're interested in skills like nature journaling or bird photography, Bird Academy has something for everyone. To find out more, click the link to Bird Academy in the show notes. Or find them at academy.allaboutbirds.org. That's academy.allaboutbirds.org. So something that is so cool about the work you do is the fact that you aren't just waiting and wishing that more diverse people would begin to bird. Yeah. You're actually doing something about it. I mean, if you're going to talk about it, you might as well be about it. <laughs> might as well be about it. <laughs> Can you tell me about Black Birders Week and how it got started? Of course. Of course. Yeah. The Christian Cooper situation happened in New York mm-hmm. and we were kind of just in the group chat like... This is really disheartening. This is really discouraging. Just being a Black person outside and you're just trying to live your own birding life. Right. And, like, we can't even do that. Yeah. And so the discussion itself kind of turned into let's celebrate the people Mm. that are already outdoors, but, you know, also encourage other people to go outdoors. And that spiraled into a week. And I think one of my favorite things about it was just everybody— got right to it and really showed their strengths. And we threw it together in literally a week. Wow. We came up with the idea. And then the week was the next week. (laughs) So I did not know that. Yeah, like flyers and the ideas for each day. And it just shows what you can do when people are on the same page and you have a common goal. And the common goal was 
showcase the necessity and the lack of diversity that currently Mm. exists, but also highlight the people that are out there. You know, there's kids, there's grandparents, there's people in academia, there's people who do it for sport. There's Black people outside. You just got to find them. So you're here, you're talking about (laughs) your superhero origin story, but this is legitimately like (laughs) assembling the Avengers. It's the bird Avengers. Yes. (laughs) This is literally an Avengers situation. (laughs) So is there one thing either during Black Warriors Week or after that it gives you like the most warm fuzzies. Like you're like, oh, this moment, this was the moment for me. This was my moment where I was like, oh, we did something incredible. Yeah, I think my biggest fuzzy was seeing the grandparent child involvement of everything, mm. kind of like transversing the ages. Like I'm outdoors because my mom forced us to take hikes every vacation that we ever went on, <laughs> you know? It really just showed the legacy of the outdoors and Black people, as I mentioned before, and how rooted it is. Mm. So I loved people posting their pictures and telling stories, too. Like, I remember going out with my grandmother, and she would tell me the birds that used to visit her yard. And I hope that it was bringing up these memories that people hadn't thought of in a while. And be like, you know what? Maybe I should maybe I should go outside and see if I can find the birds that my grandma pointed out to me. Mm. Or maybe, you know, I haven't seen my grandpa in a minute. We should go fishing or canoeing or something. So that was my favorite part. I love the nostalgia of it all. Yeah, that's so sweet. And it goes back to what you were saying. Like, Black folks and community of color aren't new to nature. Right. right. (laughs) Not in the long shot. (laughs) And it could look different. But it's so great to kind of see that line, that generational line, all enjoying the same activity. Exactly. And I love that you pointed out, like you said, the experiences are are different, but there is a legacy of it. Often people are just like, Black people don't go outside. They don't do this or they don't do that. But just because it doesn't look like how the traditional go outdoors Mm. doesn't mean that you don't have a connection to it. Yeah. So it is now Black Birders Week 2021. It is the second time around. What are we looking forward to this week? What's happening? What do you guys have up your sleeve? I'm sure it's some really dope stuff. Yes, for sure. This year, we're all about celebrating and highlighting Black people. The ones that came out of the woodwork last year, um, I think a lot of Black birders do it for themselves. You do it for because you love it. You do it because it's your passion. Um, but there should be, like, give you your flowers for that. Yeah. And uh, there should be recognition. So. What I see for Black Birders Week is always acknowledgement and growth, encouraging more kids to get out there with their parents or, you know, their grandparents, and hopefully impacting the generations that are already present. We want to actually embrace and encourage more involvement this year. So coordinating with Cornell's Bird Lab and coordinating with eBird and encouraging people to actually get out there and bird together and create and grow the community that we now know exists. Mm. Like we said, we're trying to change the narrative. So the people that are already in those seats, showing them there's some people missing from the table. Yeah. And we'd love to be there. So, so Absolutely. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there regardless, one way or another. Absolutely. So I have one last question. You're outside. You're birding. You're in the zone. What's in your birding playlist? Like, what are you? Yeah. <laughs> what's what's the vibes? <laughs> like, if yeah. you, <laughs> I feel like black people are known for music. If there's one thing we're gonna do, we're gonna laugh, we're gonna have fun, and we're gonna <laughs> find some music, right? Mm-hmm. So one, it depends on the mood for the day. If I'm like somebody made me mad at work, and now I'm going out to you know calm down and recenter or whatever. Like, we might have R.I.P. DMX. We might have some DMX playing, you know, real low so I can hear the bird calls. But, you know, if it's a chill day, um, I love her. I love Summer Walker. Mm. Megan might get thrown in there if we're kind of feeling kind of high. The range. The range. The range. Stupid. The only way I'm coming back to you is if you dream it, lose it, prove it. It depends on the vibe for the day. 
there are different vibes for bird walks, mm. right? You go out with a group and they don't want anybody to talk <laughs> or make any noise or walk too loudly, right? Um, or you go on a bird walk and they're like, okay, with talking, but sometimes like it's super serious. Or you go with your friends, y'all talk, and if you hear a bird, you stop talking and you listen to the bird. And then once it's done, you keep talking. So there's just different... Uh, I hate keep saying vibes, but but it is the vibe. It's, it is the you're vibe. describing yeah. the vibes. There's just yeah. different different vibes that go on uh, when you go on bird walk with different people. And so, one of the things I love about the community that we're building is that I can go on a bird walk with Black people who might have the same vibe that I have, and the walk is mm. completely different. Mm. And you know, we might listen to Beyonce as we walk down the trail, and mm. you know, talk about whatever, and then be like, "Ooh, I saw something." and you know, look at the bird. So <laughs> I love it. I, I love the duality and the variety. But yeah, those are my songs. <laughs> I love it. You gave us a full on soundtrack for bird watching. Hey, I I can make one for real. <laughs> I was going to say that, but I didn't want to be presumptuous. <laughs> okay. Well, I will make an official birding playlist. Just just look at that. One of the co-creators <laughs> of Black Birders Week is curating hey. A bird watching playlist for us. I love it. Look at it. Again, I the range. It. We are gonna put a link to that in the show notes. And don't and don't expect don't expect I'm I mean, expecting it all, Sheridan. <laughs> well, that's one that I wanted to highlight. Do expect it all because I listen to everything. So when Mozart comes on and then Megan the Stallion comes on right after it, <laughs> don't be surprised. <laughs> okay, just go with it. Just go with it. All right. What a gift. What a gift. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sheridan. This has been so much fun. Same. I love it. I've, I've been cheesing. My, my little cheeks hurt now. <laughs> In speaking with Sheridan, what struck me was her insistence on the fact that even though Black Birders Week was born out of the painful situation in the ramble last year, it's a celebration. And even with the lens focused on the Black experience, she reminded me that there is no singular Black experience. We're not a monolith. And because of this, there are many ways that the organizers are also considering our intersectionality, which is a term coined by Dr. Kimberly Crenshaw that addresses the interconnected experience of gender, race, social class, etc., by being mindful of all the things that make us, us like birding in urban areas, the Black immigrant experience, neurodiversity, and accessibility. The list goes on. Definitely go check out what's happening right now for Black Birders Week. We've got links to that and how to keep up with Sheridan in the show notes and on our website, birdnote.org. Bring Birds Back is produced by Mark Bramhill and me, Tanaja Hamilton, we're edited by Oluwakemi Aladisuyi of Rough Cut Collective. Our content director is Allison Wilson. Our lead science advisor is Trina Bayard. Music is by Cosmo Sheldrake and Blue Dot Sessions. And special thanks to Vicki Merrick and Rika Murphy. And of course, many thanks to our seasoned sponsor, the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Check out all they have to offer like Bird Academy online courses and the Merlin ID app at allaboutbirds.org. And we'd love to hear from you, our Bring Birds Back flock. Send a voice memo of what you're doing for Black Birders Week to our email, bringbirdsback at birdnote.org. Thanks for listening. I'm Tanaja Hamilton. And in the words of Sheridan, we out here. See you next time. Do you have a, a feeling about who's like the Beyonce of birds? Maybe the secretary bird. The secretary bird. So doesn't bird sound very Beyonce in nature. It doesn't, but don't let the secretary fool you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> she is not here to play. Um, they're a bird in South Africa, in Africa in general. A very drama in your face, here to strut and stunt bird. Known for their eyelashes. They're really just obviously feathers, but 
Oh. Yeah. They fancy. Well, like, look at those eyelashes. It's like, girl, who is your lash tech? <laughs> like, I need to know. Hashtag who is your lash tech? Right. 